We just made these super trendy, high profit, laser engraved hair clips and we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it or make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, I'm getting all up in your hair. This week, we're working on our smalls. If you joined our patron Zoom call last month, you know we talked about adding small dollar items to your craft booth because we're joining a new pop-up tabletop craft booth and we need smaller items. We don't have those currently in our booth. We use our standing displays and only bring our door rounds, but we wanted to start adding some small items because small dollar items can add up to big dollars. And we have very limited space, so we have to shrink everything. These hair clips are so trendy right now, we thought we'd show you how we're gonna take a picture of the clip, make it a template, add your own artwork to it, and then make it a digital cut file for your laser. Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We're gonna start with some hair clips. I got these on Amazon. I've included the link below. These are six pack for $10. So they're about $1.66 or something a piece. We needed some eighth inch birch plywood. And because eighth inch birch plywood is expensive, or at least more expensive than cardboard, we're gonna use this cardboard to make all of our test cuts. We also needed some stain. We're gonna be using some of our friends over at Unicorn Spit, some of their stain. We're gonna be mixing some colors. Ooh. We're gonna use some Minwax stain. Stains. <laughs> Different colors. Yeah. And we're gonna need some Starbond Thick to glue the wood pieces onto our clips. <laughs> Step two. We're gonna make our template. I don't know what this shape is. I don't know what this shape is called. It's kind of a weird shape. Gonna have to make it. And I don't know what size this thing is, but I wanna make something that fits this thing perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this over. We're gonna have a little photo shoot, me and the hair clip, and I'm gonna bring it in the Illustrator. We're gonna create a template. When I was taking a picture of this thing, I wanted limited colors. So I wanted a white background and the color of the clip in my photo. So I tried to flood the background to get rid of any shadows. I laid a measuring tape down so that when I resized it in Illustrator, I'd know what size it actually was. And then I also used my flash to try to, again, eliminate any shadows. All right, let's drag that photo into Illustrator. And I'm going to make a copy of this thing. So Control C, Control Shift V, it'll paste it right over top. I'm gonna to trace this top one. I'm gonna to use the bottom one as my control. So let's go to the image trace window. And now I'm just gonna to start to play with the image trace until I get a good clean, like two color. This gets a bit tedious and every image is a little bit different. So I'm just gonna fast forward through this. I get deeper into image trace and stuff like that over on Patreon during our live Zoom calls, little training sessions. Once my image is satisfactory, I'm going to expand it and then ungroup it. From there, I'm just gonna delete all the pieces I don't want, like this background, this little gray thing back here, and whatever happened to the tape measure. I'll delete both of these things. Now I'm gonna group my new object and the original picture I'm gonna to try to get the size right. So I'm gonna draw a five inch rectangle. Then I'm going to shrink the image until the tape measure is about five inches so that the tape measure matches my five inch rectangle. So that's a good starting point for size of this hair clip. All right, I'm done with the rectangle. We can get rid of it. Let's ungroup the picture and the object. Now let's get rid of this hole in the middle. So I'm gonna release it and then immediately unite it now it's all just one thing. I wanna get rid of this top tab. I'm gonna draw a rectangle up at the top by selecting the top object and the bottom object, going to my Pathfinder tool, and then using minus front, I should get rid of that tab on the top. Now if I select my pen tool, we'll see that there's a lot of extra little nodes, a lot of little extra handles. So I'm gonna take care of this with the first round of simplifying my path. I'm gonna to go to my path, simplify, use their defaults. See, it really cleaned up those things. I got a little outlier here. Just gonna delete that. Now to make sure this thing is symmetrical and both sides match, I'm gonna do a copy, control, shift, paste. That should paste one right over top of the other. I'm gonna change the color so you can see that there's two now. My top one's pink. 
control Z, control Z. Now I'm gonna go up to object, transform, reflect. That should flip the top one vertically. Now I'm gonna select both objects, the top one and the bottom one, my window pathfinder tool, and we're gonna unite these two. Now this thing should be a symmetrical hair clip. Now because a small hair clip isn't some crazy shape, I can just use my rounded corner rectangle tool and I'm gonna draw a rectangle that's two and a quarter inches wide, one and a quarter inch tall. All right, let's get these ready to test cut. So we're gonna lose the fill and then we're gonna give it a stroke of red. I like red for cuts. Now I'm gonna export this as an SVG. Then I'm gonna head over to Creative Space and import that SVG and we're gonna cut it. Step three, time for some test cuts. We're gonna use our cardboard because it's faster and cheaper. This is a great thing to use those Amazon boxes. Everybody has them laying around. <laughs> this is a great use for those when you're doing your test cuts. Start with cardboard, put it together, make sure it's the right size. That's the way to do it. Our first cut was only like 10, 15 seconds and it's a little too big. I'm glad I used cardboard. <laughs> so I'm gonna adjust it in Illustrator and we'll try another cut. I'm gonna shrink the big clip and I'm gonna make the little clip a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna bring the big clip down to four and a quarter inches wide. I measured the clip. And I'm gonna just bring the small clip up a scooch and let's go cut it again. We're gonna add our designs to our template. So I created a bunch of different animal prints. I thought this would be easy to start with. There's lots of animal prints out there and they'll give me a big selection right off the bat. I also knew that I wanted to add a couple of snarky signs or snarky sayings on our clips because snarky always sells snarky it. Sells. <laughs> and then Garrett was clever enough to say, hey, are you gonna put that saying on both sides? Uh, one of them, well, two of them actually have the word heifer on them. Uh, so I think I'm gonna put the cow print on one side and the heifer saying on the other. Yeah, kinda keep it in that same aesthetic. All right, Kim's got a bunch of artwork, so I need to make a couple of these. I'm gonna give it a background color so that I can see these a little easier and make a bunch of copies. And now we'll get ready for the artwork. All right, this first piece of artwork, we're gonna start with another SVG. So I'm just gonna copy this SVG and paste it over top of one of my hair clips, one of the big hair clips. I'm gonna position it so that it looks like cow print on this thing. I'm gonna use that copy and paste right back into place using that control shift V Now I should have a copy of that hair clip object. I'm gonna select that and the cow print. We'll go to our window pathfinder tool and this time we're gonna crop. Now that should put the cow print in the shape of my hair clip. I'm gonna do the same thing to the small hair clip. I'm gonna get it into place. I'm gonna copy, control, shift, V then I'm gonna select that and the cow print and crop. Now to keep this pattern shape, to keep the file size down and to make sure that it engraves in a quick, timely manner, I'm gonna rasterize both of these SVG patterns inside of this cut file. All right, that was how to do it if I had an SVG. Kim gave me a couple of PNG artwork things too. So let's go ahead and drag those PNGs over. I'm gonna use the same type of method to place them. And then I'm gonna copy the big clip. I'm gonna paste it right back into place. But the difference is instead of using my crop tool, I'm gonna to go up to my path and I'm gonna make a clipping path. 
with both objects selected, I'm gonna go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. Now that PNG is in the shape of my hair clip. I'm gonna do the same thing to the little guy. And to make sure these patterns also keep their shape, I'm also gonna raster these images. Now these things should keep their shape when I bring them into Lightburn or Creative Space. I'm gonna add all of the other artwork. Most of these are PNG, so I'm gonna be using the same type of technique for all of these. I'm gonna be making a clipping mask and then rasterizing all of the patterns inside of the clips. Once I'm done, I'm gonna lose the fill to all of the clips and keep their red stroke on the hair clips with the designs inside rasterized. And when I'm ready, I'm gonna export this as an SVG. For my options, I'm gonna keep the inline style. Fonts, I don't have any fonts, but I wanna make sure that my images are embedded and that the two checkboxes at the bottom, minify and responsive, are unchecked. Step five, we're gonna make all of our cuts. We're gonna do something different this week. We thought it would be fun to show you how to make these cuts on all three of our X-Tool lasers. We're gonna make them on our F1, in case you wanna do some personalization right at a craft show. We're gonna make them on our D1, our diode laser. And then we're also gonna make them on our P2, our new CO2 laser. Do you know we have an online store where you can find all of the door rounds and projects we make on this channel? We also offer craft and paint supplies for one-stop shopping. And join us over on Patreon.com for additional content, a weekly after show, access to our SVGs, and a monthly Zoom call where you can share ideas, learn from us as well as other subscribers. And we've just added Adobe Illustrator classes once a month on Mondays to learn how to use Adobe Illustrator from the master. <laughs> master. Now that we have them all cut on all three lasers, what's your vote? My vote? I think the P2. I think the P2 did the best, followed by the D1. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the D1 uh, surprised me. Yeah, I, I was gonna be my same vote. Yeah. I am very impressed, I will say, with the Virgo and the detail in the lady on the Virgo with her hair. Yeah. I think the D1 did an excellent job of retaining all of the detail. Yeah, it didn't burn it up too much. Yeah. Uh, but the flip side of that is, it's not engraving super deep. So when you look at the salty hair, don't care, it looks great, but it's got a very shallow engrave. Yeah. So the reason why I'm voting P2 is because it has a little bit deeper engrave but yet still does a pretty good job of keeping the detail. Agreed. We did these on the 100 watt laser and the Virgo lady, it just blew her out. I mean, yeah, it I engraved way settings. too deep. Yeah, that was the settings <laughs> on the laser. Um, the F1 did a great job of engraving. I think the F1... super fast. Yeah, so its fast. specialty is engraving. It did cut cut this eighth inch birch. Uh, it burned a little on the edges, yeah, right? Yeah, it was burning on the edges. But I don't think it's really gonna matter if you're gonna stain these. If you were just gonna keep these with this birch look, that might be an issue. But if you plan to stain them right on the spot, I think you're good to go. I mean, I think, uh, I, think I would cut the blanks and then just do the engraving. Using right. The F1. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Just yeah. have a bunch of blanks, and then you can put the design right on there, uh, or their name, or their monogram. Yeah, that's how. Uh, I do it. Because it did a wonderful job of keeping the detail in her dress. This is probably the best one to see that she actually has claws for claws. feet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so 
I think they all did a good job. They do. They have different strengths, uh, but I, did, I know a lot of you guys have the D1, so I wanted you to see what the D1 can do. We've been advertising the F1 and how excited we are about using that at the craft show, so I wanted you to see that. And then, of course, uh, Big Daddy P2 over there. We wanted to have some fun as well and show you what it can do. Step six, stain and or paint. I'm going stain. Yes. Garrett, whoa, whoa. Garrett. I didn't know it was open. Who opened it? <laughs> you probably did I flipping did. it around. Give me this. It's all over the wall. It is everywhere. <laughs> okay, anyway, we're going to stain all of these things. We're going to stain them with some colors. Um, I didn't get any on me. <laughs> you didn't. There's not a drop on me. <laughs> it's on the light, it's on the camera, it's on the wall. On other wood. Oh my goodness! I don't even know how are we gonna how are we gonna film over this. I guess we can. <laughs> Things happen. <laughs> Step. Seven. It's time to assemble. We're gonna bring it all together with a little bit of this Starbond thick and we'll get in between those little cracks. We're just gonna take our engraved piece and glue it on this plastic hair piece. Hair piece. Hair piece. Like Do you think we should uh, rough it up a little bit? Uh huh. A little sandpaper. A little sandpaper? Yeah. Didn't let's you have some right over here just a second ago? Step eight, profit. So we are all in on the big clips, $1.73. That is the clip and the wood. Engrave time, about 15 minutes on the D1 and the P2. And it was like seven minutes on the F1. Yeah, the F1, the F1 is F1 a was fast super engraver. fast, although it wasn't as deep. I think the best engrave actually came from the P2 and it had the quickest cut time. Right, right. But if you have a D1, this is a great craft for the D1. If you have an F1, it's a good little craft for the F1. It'll engrave it and cut it, and you can personalize it right on the spot. So all I right. think it's a great little craft for all three. Let's talk pricing then. All right, so I'm thinking we'll charge $4 for the little, $8 for the big, or the set of small and little for two for 10. Uh, both for 10. Yeah, right. both the set of small and big, $10. And then what, for like 15 for two bigs? Two for 15 on the big ones instead of one for 10, one for right. eight. Well, I mean, that's not bad. That's a good chunk of change. And I've seen a booth over there that when it was really hot out, she was selling these things like hot cakes. Yeah, well, so. and I can attest to that because we were just at a craft show it was super hot outside. I didn't have a ponytail holder. And guess what? The booth across from us was, was selling these clips with nothing on them, just plain. And I was like, hmm. So I bought it. I think I spent $10 just on the clip oh, itself. on a plain clip, $10. Yes, yes. yes. See? So yes. I think this is a great bid. This will totally work for our smalls. Yeah. And with that, we're about out of time. We will see you on Tuesday where we're back with another Test Cut Tuesday. We took the holiday off, but we are back. And then we'll see you again next Friday where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. And I mean, can you even balance something this small? Does that even count as balancing? What if I do it like one Look, I can, I can balance it. Whoa, big. Whoa, you're good. Whoa! <laughs> do what you do. Whoa! <laughs> That's good.